Dragonair, Silent Gods, what's up everybody? Hope everybody's doing well. Day 10, Season 3. Let's go. We're getting closer and closer to that legendary we're going to be fighting after for those chief challenges. And then we're going to be even closer to the Dungeons and Dragons collaboration we have coming up. We've still got like a year, a more than a year of Dungeons and Dragons collaboration. So that's pretty sweet. Guys, if you're not playing this though, come and join us down below. Download the game. You'll see a link down there. Even if you're watching this on YouTube, you'll see a link down there. And we also have a really nice Discord. So come join us in Discord. Trying to look at what I've done today. I'm pretty much done with what I need to do on my main account. So we're going to jump over to the test server and keep testing. We've got tons of aura testing I want to do. Season 3, new heroes. We've been testing them on the Vortex boss. The Vortex boss is a really big part of... Something that we focus on to do a lot of damage. Here's the Frost Domain that I've been doing all day today to get ready for rank 28. So I can make some rank 5 heroes. Adventure rank 28. Then we can make rank 5 heroes. And I've got a lot of resources to do that with. Arturo, what's up, my man? You're awake? How you doing? What's up? How's your weekend going? Pretty good? Did you ever jump back on uh, some COD? <laughs> I haven't played, and I know there's a new week. There's got to be a new week by now with some kind of new attachment, and I need to play it. I want to. I really want to. I want to get on there. I want to see what this new attachment's about. A lot of times, I'm disappointed with the new little jack, jack attachments or whatever they are that augment the gun completely. Most times, they really disappoint me, but sometimes they're kind of cool. A few of them will be. Yo, HDK, how you doing today? Good afternoon, my friend. Holy crap, man. Hope you're popping a whole bunch of medicine to get that down and i hope you feel better soon 105 fever for three days bro you're gonna lose a lot of weight i know it's not worth it but uh when you're sick like that you're gonna lose a lot of weight weight right oreos what's up my man you don't eat a lot you don't feel like you want to eat like nothing tastes good you know you don't want to eat anything Okay, that was it today. Like, I'm done with my stuff today. Guys, do you think we'll be at Adventure Rank 28 tomorrow, or are they going to stiff us, <laughs> kind of slow us down even more, and we'll only be at Adventure Rank 27 right to, like, we're going to need to do one more day to tick over to 28, right? I think that's what's going to happen, because we're at 26. Like, we're right there at 26. You see it? We're so close to 27. I bet we get enough tomorrow that we get into 27, but we don't make 28. They're going to do that to us. Watch. What's going on? Surprise stream time. Revamp. Good to see you. Yo, Stu, midnight. What's happening? Midnight. We're going to check out those juicy aura heroes today is what I want to do. I'm on my main account, but I'm, I'm done with everything. I've been farming like crazy on my main account, the domains. I've got so much rank up material. I'm going to be able to destroy ranking up at least 10 heroes right away. As soon as we get to adventure rank 28. I think we're going to be a little short of 28. I bet we will. Because then what's that mean we've got to do tomorrow? Farm some more domains. That's it. I don't think anything else opens up, right? <laughs> yeah, I bet it's going to be that way. Man. You need to grind? Hey, man, grind it out. But you can't grind when you're feeling this sick, my man. You need to get some rest. I hope you feel better, really. I guarantee we're going to be short of 28. I know it. Did you have any luck with your shadow guys? Let me get some sound on here. Settings. Let me hear some of these. Oh, it's on already. What's going on? I don't think I have the right. Okay, that's why. Okay, now I can hear stuff. You guys could probably hear the game sound too. die trying to do it hey you might as well if you feel a little bit better that'll at least get you uh keep your eyes open for a while that'll always keep my eyes open when i play for sure oh this is the test server we don't need to worry about any of this stuff on the test server we just need to go check out those aura teams maybe i got lucky and aura will be the team you know what i'm using right now on my uh main account which i need to showcase how awesome what's his name S sarno what was <laughs> can't even remember these names uh i always want to say cyril but it's not cyril you know the fire guy how awesome that fire guy is that he can protect somebody and make it so they take zero damage from that big lightning strike that comes down sonaro this guy so when i have sonaro on here he's just a beast man but you have to manual but then every time i manual i just make sure that before 
whoever's whoever has the highest max hp whoever's getting hit by that lightning strike he puts that they can't take damage and that'll work up to 150 stacks it's not unkillable but it's damn near close because that one person taking all that damage it's it's damn near close because he's always doing 100 percent uptime on decreased attack so we're not taking a lot of damage so getting to 150 stacks isn't that difficult for your whole entire team and then keeping that one person alive that has the highest hp is guaranteed because you're putting that they can take no damage up whenever they get hit yeah the fire lord this guy is no joke but look at this team right here i've got this girl the new one that we're gonna get to fight after fight over i guess not well we're not fighting over her everybody's gonna get her as long as you do between 7 and 11 million on the chief challenges and you roll 40 dice you're gonna get this lady i was using her to do damage put up shields and then off those shields we were getting the decrease attack I didn't have anybody to do decreased attack on this team. So I was like, let me bring in decreased attack. And you see how I have um, our girl here. Daphne's in here to help out Girth along with Shinna. This was the test to see if next season would be good. Because next season we've got Necrosis along with Ice. Could we actually bring up Girth's damage with Daphne? Would it make a difference? Let me go over to my chart. The DPS die fast. We'll see the DPS gets saved though a lot because he's putting up 100% decrease attack the whole entire time. So your DPS can get really saved. And, and mine's got a, does your guy put up a shield? I'll do a video. I need to do a video on just how awesome he is, but I really don't want him to get nerfed. I do not want Sonaro to get nerfed. I don't think he would get nerfed, but he's just so good. I mean, on any team, really, on any team, the guy's just crazy. Yeah, I, I think he's amazing. I think that he's made it very, very easy for me to do Venom, higher stages of Venom than I should, because as long as he gets that decreased attack up on the boss, there's nothing to worry about. Pretty much any dungeon. Venom, it's harder because there's other orbs. There's other targets for him to hit, so it's harder just to get decreased def, decrease attack up on just the boss. But once you do, you got nothing to worry about on Grave of Venom Stage 9. It's cake. I've been farming nine. It, it's like nothing. So any other dungeon that I play, it's the same thing. If I get that, if I put him in there, if I put him in and I'm going up against Ancient Battlefield, 100% uptime on decreased attack. When he's always doing damage to us, he's pounding the ground. When he does his ultimate, all that. Easy. It's, it's just cake. And, it, and it's so much better than anybody else. Because you know how sometimes we'll have way over the accuracy it tells us to. But we don't land our debuffs. We don't know why. We've got like 350. It says recommended is 270. We've got 350, and we just keep not landing our decrease attack from time to time. Not always, but just enough that it gets annoying. But with this dude, we don't have to worry about that. You know? It's just nice. And then if you put the staff on him, you get shields that are pretty big. At least that's how I play him. And the staff doesn't even work well. I mean, it doesn't give him additional benefits, right? We're not. It's not attack plus skill haste and then we get those shields off of healing oh do you hear my voice oh no no that was a minute ago yeah for a second you did i was on a video while i was pulling up this right here i was pulling up my uh, spreadsheet sorry i was pulling up this spreadsheet so here's what we've got so far all right so we got the we got the corrosion teams yes did i do anything new with corrosion no. I did do something new with this Ice Blast team. So I've got teams down here with Daphne. <laughs> but they only got 32 million and 34 million. So Daphne really doesn't help out. It's it's better just to have Bledin on the team. Because Bledin will give her 20% additional attack whenever he does his ultimate. That helps her enough. Plus Bledin pulls in really good damage. So it didn't help having Daphne... Even if they were to, like, even if it's next season and they're the same element, it didn't help bring up the damage really. 32 million, 34 million with Bledin instead, we got 37 million. I mean, if we went all crazy with her, I, I, I don't know. It's, it's just probably not worth it. She's another legendary and we can do it with an epic, so it's just not worth our time, really. But we'll try it out next season. We'll do more testing next season for sure. We did a whole bunch of testing with Azul. We've got Azul, 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 Azul all the way down. And I was going to try Azul with the eyeball, but with the eyeball, we're going to have to change gear on him. 
Like, we can do that right now, but we're going to have to change a... Hold on. Let me see. What was the team? Element. First off, we need... Oh, we should have a save. Please tell me we have a save still. Okay. So we've got Azul here, like we normally would. He should be in gear set one. I'm pretty sure he is. And I got the egg, the shadow spawn leveled up, but it's got tons of crit rate. Um, like crazy crit rate. So we're going to have to change these crit rate gloves for critical damage. So it's a really easy change. And see if it does more damage than what we had previously. And we don't need a uh, crit rate, right? No, he's well over crit rate. Like he's, he's way over. Or he'll be right at it with this. So let's get something with decent attack. Critical damage. We don't need crit rate. There was attack though of 18. That's pretty damn high. Okay, there's critical damage with 18% attack. That's a lot. He's at 111. And he's got this egg on instead of the horseshoe. And we know the numbers we get with the horseshoe, so we'll compare it afterwards. We have his Polta, right? Same gear as before. Teledy's queued up. All we got to do is do nothing, right? We have our time set up, 1426. Yeah, everything's set up. Okay, cool. Let's run it. Let's see how good this egg really is. This shadow spawn. We know Azul's good. Yeah, we do know Azul's good. And he's really good against AoE too. So if we... Whatever boss we encounter later on, he's going to be amazing there. And I don't think we're going to ever fight any kind of chief challenge that's going to need AoE, right? Even when we fought Toll War in Season 2 when he brought out those mushrooms... It wasn't like we were damaging those mushrooms. We weren't doing any damage to it at all. I wish there was. I wish I wish there was a way that they could make a chief challenge and then have something else with it so we could like bounce some damage off of and get some more damage in there with AoE instead of just having the end season boss be like an AoE boss. Do you hear something weird? I don't think so. Okay. Uh... Urzillus was AoE? Ah, uh, you're right. He was AoE because he did the summons. We didn't... Well, okay. He was AoE, but we did more damage with Wild on him than we did with Burn. So, go figure. Or, if you had the exclusive... What's her name? Hivatar? You could kind of... Something happened to where she could kill those extremely easy. You could get insane damage with her on that on that battle. It was crazy. But for some reason, AoE did not do well against Urzillus, which was a real disappointment because we had that new wild, that whole new wild damage come into the season. All those new wild heroes, and it just wasn't that great. It wasn't as great as having something like Netta. You just have a wild team, and you do more damage on Urzillus. You get that 22 million easy. So maybe we'll have some more... I bet we're going to have at least one summon, don't you think? Even if it's, um, what's the one that does the big fear barrier? Like the big hulking undead? That would give us two targets and he'd be kind of, he'd be kind of hard to fight. Because that guy puts it in like a meteor and then that big hulking fear barrier starts smashing everybody with AoE. That'd be a hard one. That'd be fun. Well, burn, I mean, you're talking about exclusive. Exclusives are always so superior to everything so yeah he hits the whole entire screen puts up a lot of burns himself in a big area and uh does a lot of single target and a crazy amount of aoe damage sonaro plus wild oh yeah sonaro plus wild would kill it right again having decreased attack up 100 percent of the time on a chief challenge all we got to do then is put up a recharge speed to slow them down a little bit so they don't get that attack increase as fast or something to knock back their attack gauge and we just go full damage no issues because Sonaro's healing everybody, too. <laughs> uh, Sarlatch. Yeah, that's who it is. So if we fought against Sarlatch as a chief challenge, I think that'd be a pretty difficult one. I bet we'll have another summons. Because it was pretty nice to spice it up with something they could summon. I like that. We might as well, right? We got uh, six chief challenges every season. Let's put a summon in there every time. Do that. Right, that boss was not melee friendly at all. But, I mean, nothing is. 
nothing that uh, does a lot of damage is melee friendly in, in that instance. It's not like nothing is, but things, things, uh, things like the vortex boss melee friendly, sure, because just the way it is. The harpy isn't always melee friendly. All the other bosses are melee friendly. It's like it's, it's no big deal, right? We can bring melee into any of the other bosses, and it's okay. Might be a little more difficult in Grave of Rot, depending on your team, because they will be up there getting hit in that cross-section attack, along with the big AoE for everybody. But mostly it's okay, you know? Season 3 heroes as bosses this time? No, they, they probably won't do that. I don't think they're going to do that. I think we should have Season 4 heroes as bosses. If they did Chief Challenges as new heroes that we, were, that we won't see for a whole entire season, and we don't even know what they do, just to give us a little glimpse, that'd be kind of cool. Yo, JR, what's up, my man? It's 5 p.m. Yeah, well, I'm on. I'm on late. Yeah, yeah, it's 5 p.m. We went to the Cherry Blossom Festival again with my kids. Then I took a little nap for an hour. Just woke up from that. So I got to get this stream in. Then I got to edit some videos. I got to get a video out for another game tonight. And then I want to go get a run in. I'm trying to get some more cardio lately. It's summertime, man. I got all these shirts that I wear. And uh, my tummy's poking out a little bit. That's what happens when you don't do anything all winter long. I was hitting the gym last year. Same time last year, I was hitting the gym for four months strong. Doing so good. So good. Great shape. Then I went to flew out to LA to meet the guys for King Arthur Legends Rise. And even when I was there, I hit the gym that morning because I was waking up early. So I went to the gym at the, the Roosevelt Hotel there in LA working out. And then I came back from then and I was sick for three weeks. Right when I came back from LA, sick from three weeks, I got sick because America makes you sick. Came back here, and then after those three weeks, man, I didn't do nothing. It was like cold winter time it started to turn into, and I was just lazy. Like, so incredibly lazy. Just let myself go. I gotta get back in shape. I've been working on it for like the last couple months, though. I don't think it's gonna take too long. Your fatty, uh, bomb, bomb baddie. Fatty Bombatty? No, man, come on. I'm not that bad. I'm not that bad, but I do. I feel like I need to drop like 10 pounds. I really do feel like that because all my shirts aren't shirts that are really loose if I gain weight. You know what I mean? Like, they're shirts that look good as form-fitting on me. Not tight by any means because I'm never the type of guy that needs like a, a muscle shirt. I don't need those little tight shirts. It's just good fitting, you know? Not tight, not loose, but if you have a belly... The way, it, the way it shapes my chest, because you can see my chest really well, and then goes down. If I have a belly, it just doesn't look right, you know? So, could be the meat issue, but it keeps me uh, in check, you know what I'm saying? Keep myself in check. But when I eat well and diet, it's not a diet. I don't believe in dieting. What I believe in is eating in moderation. So, always eat what you love. Just don't eat as much of it. So, right now, I'm trying to slim down. So, what I, whenever I eat something... I eat like half of it or a quarter of it. I give the rest to my family or when I go to McDonald's, I'll eat a double cheeseburger, but I, I don't eat any French fries or, or I won't even eat a double cheeseburger. Maybe I'll have um, the flat chicken that they do, the shaka shaka chicken, and I'll have a salad at McDonald's. Yeah, but I still believe when you diet, you shouldn't like dieting. Any, any people you ever hear who talk about dieting? Yeah, double cheeseburger. Always, man. It's like the only it's my go to at McDonald's. We call it Mac here. I was about to call it Mac, but everybody in Japan. If you go up to a Japanese person and say, hey, man, where's your closest McDonald's? They're going to be like, what's this guy talking about? McDonald's? I've never heard of that before. But if you just say Mac, which is part of McDonald's, you would think that they would get it. But you got to say Mac, man. They know what Mac is. Yeah, double cheeseburger for life, baby. That's what I've always gotten there. But I believe you should always eat. Like, if anybody ever tells you to diet and eat just, like, salads all the time, no. You're not going to... Not only are you not going to stick with that diet... You're going to feel like, like there's no way for you to lose weight because you think every diet sucks and you just have no hope. But that is not the case. You eat whatever you like. You just eat smaller things. Like this, this last year, I used to eat a whole bowl of cereal, like a big bowl of cereal, right? And I got a smaller bowl. And I only used that smaller bowl. And then sometimes when I wanted cereal and I knew it was like outside of me already eating dinner, lunch, and all that kind of stuff, or maybe it was late at night and I wanted a little snack. I've got this, it's not even a bowl, it's a cup. 
It's not a cup for drinking coffee, but it's smaller than that. It's like a little bowl that you maybe put in like a couple grapes or something like that. I started eating cereal out of this small little clear bowl. It's like as big as uh, something that you eat grape uh, yogurt out of. I put my cereal in there, put the milk in there. I grab a spoon and I take maybe like a good six or seven bites. That's it, man. I put it in the sink. You can eat what you like. Just don't eat as much. And the way you do that is by getting smaller portions. Potato chips, maybe put them in a whole bunch of Ziploc bags and only eat that one Ziploc bag. Don't keep going back for like five or six Ziploc bags. Otherwise, it doesn't, you know, it defeats the purpose. You know, you just got to break it up like that. You got a double Royale cheeseburger as well. And just the, the honest double. Yeah, I don't we don't have a double Royale. We do have different Japanese seasonal burgers here in Japan. I will say that they do McDonald's really well. Because I remember in America, we never had this many different burgers. But in Japan, every month, maybe it'll run for like two months. Every two months, there'll be three different burgers. Just whatever. Something weird. Maybe egg on it. Maybe like a Hawaiian burger. Or just some kind of weird different burgers you can try out. Ranked 8th in the world service over one billion people daily wow that's a lot of people man i think mcdonald's is doing okay they're always busy in japan i've never seen an empty mcdonald's people fill that thing up it's cheap too so a lot of people like to go there because it's very inexpensive we have a kentucky fried chicken here too that has a little bit different food than kind of kfc that you have back home but it's really expensive mcdonald's is by far the cheapest place to eat and kids love chicken nuggets Hell, man, I like chicken nuggets, you know? I'm not going to diss on chicken nuggets. I like those bad boys, too. They did a garlic pepper chicken nugget here, and it comes in every once in a while, and those are really good. They're just like the normal chicken nuggets, but the whole outside is totally different. It's like a garlic pepper blend. They're a little crunchier on the outside, and they kind of taste better, honestly. Hey, man, did we just get $47 million? Ah, because we used... Well... We used a horseshoe and we got 45 million. So we picked up a little bit by using the, the egg, right? But I don't feel like it's that crazy, right? This is pretty nice. It's pretty nice that it's not that it wasn't like a wild swing and damage. Copy paste. Yeah, yeah, right there, right there. Let me write all this down. Hold on one sec. You guys are making me hungry for McDonald's right now. I had a, I had lunch way earlier on, and then I took, like I said, I took a little nap. After I get done streaming, I want to be pretty hungry, but my wife has a whole bunch of tempura shrimp left over, some broccoli beef left over, plus she was making some uh, chicken and a whole bunch of other stuff, so there's plenty of food for me to eat when I get done streaming. Azul pulled in 35 35 million. He pulled in 33.6 with a horseshoe, though. I'm telling you, the horseshoe is beast on him. He functions like a dauntless person, right? When he turns into demon form, he's doing basic attacks only. He uh, gets an attack speed increase of 50%. So he's doing really fast with that basic attack. The horseshoe procs off the of basic attacks. We get another 50% that actually doubles up on him, which I was a little surprised about to see 250 increased speed attacks. Yeah, the horseshoe is amazing on him. Like cr crazy amazing. Who am I looking at? Oh, we didn't use Daphne. We use Espolta. Now we get to move over to the Aura Heroes, which I have. I've been having fun with the Aura Heroes, but I'm curious where they land. I don't think they're going to land very high. Oh, that's not right. Where's our boy? Yeah, he's always at 2.2. 2.253573. 2 All right. So here we go. We've got Espolta. What is he, Espolta? <laughs> okay, this is Taldi. Taldi, he's got this gear. It's Polta, and then he has... What is this thing called? 
shadow spawn. Shadow spawn. Okay. Azul with 45 million. He made 33.4 million up here with the horseshoe. He made 35.8 million with the shadow spawn. And then, of course, as Polter with the same exact gear pulled an 8.6 versus 8.4. A little variation. That's fine. We're going to have that. Same exact gear. Same exact gear for our boy Taldi. 2.2, 2.2. So it's just all about our Azul with the horseshoe versus the shadow spawn. And I think if you don't have access to the legendary, using the horseshoe is probably the best thing to do so far that I've found. Because the eyeball does nothing. It adds no damage at all. I was kind of surprised the eyeball didn't get that 20% additional damage when he's in his ultimate form. But it doesn't. It does nothing for him. We've already tested that. So unfortunately, we can't use the eyeball. But here, the horseshoe is amazing. Independently, if you can make him work solo... Or team to draw. You can just build whatever you want around him. Right. Well, what would we need to do that? Like, what kind of attack speed are we talking to be able to do that? Because if he's losing 10 shadow every second, he needs to attack and do 10 shadow every second. If you have nobody else in there with him to support, he, he's not going to get down to a one second attack speed. Even with 100% additional attack, he can't keep himself alive. Like, right now, if we put... We put horseshoe on him. He drops down. Even with Taldi here, he drops down quite a bit. This is actually probably be a, this will be easier to do on the target dummy. But when he goes into demon form, he cannot keep himself up. Not without Taldi there. Yeah, him and Taldi. But there's got to be a way that we can either. Well, the only way for him to do it himself is to have his attack speed high enough. There's just no way. Right, right now he's at 100% attack speed. Look. He procked Horseshoe right before he went in there. And he's keeping himself up. I guess. If he's attacking every second. I mean, legit, that's the only way. He has to... He, okay, he's got he's got 100% again. But I still don't think... He, I think he's attacking almost at a second. Once a second. But not quite. With that 100% additional. I mean, he's pounding pretty quick. But he falls back out. And that's bad for us. Because now he's got to wait a long time to get back into it. All right, we can't have that. Taldi, sure. If Taldi's there, he's got no issues with this. With the horse you want. Or if you just have him... Even Espolta does pretty good, too. As long as she's doing her ultimate pretty often, she can help him out. But we need his attack speed fast. Okay, we could change his gear. Now, that's no problem, right? Is this gear... This gear is just crit gear. If we went into attack speed gear, it'd be easy... If we look for attack speed substats, we'd be switching around everything we have here. But we could do it, right? It would be no issue doing that. Just for fun right now, just to see. Who gives us, like, what gear set gives us attack speed? There it is. The wearer's basic attack ignores... Whoa, he does basic attacks no the whole entire time when he's in demon form. How come we never tried this? He does basic attacks the whole entire time he's in demon form, and we're getting an attack speed increase from this gear set. Now, normally, I wouldn't care about this gear set unless I'm using Dauntless, but this bad boy it functions very much like a Dauntless. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we've got. This is pretty nice. We'll go with crit rate. Crit rate critical damage. What do we have? Speed on his runes, right. We'll look at speed on his runes. We will. We'll just get some gear replaced here because I want to see what he's like with this ignoring 20% of defense, man. That's pretty sweet. I think ignoring 20% defense since he's going to be in demon form the whole entire time is going to be way more beneficial than the current gear we have on. And we got it saved so we can jump back and forth between the gear and test on the dummy to see which one is actually better easily if we can get this guy enough crit rate. So both will have 100% chance to crit. I think we have easy crit rate too because we're using the... No, we're using horseshoe. So we're going to need some crit rate. And we're losing some crit rate because we're not using that set that gives us 10. So we do need to pick up some. And I'm not really having a lot of luck. 
seven. Well, did that hit crit? Wow, that that's dirty. Seven crit rate, thirty-one critical damage is kind of cheating compared to the other gear set we have, but we'll use it. There's 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 eight. Come on, tell me there's an attack one with crit rate. Jeez, oh, man, just one. Please hit, please hit, please hit, and I don't have to worry about this ever again. Okay, it's not bad. What? We're at 51% chance to crit. How could we have been so... It would only put us at 60 with that other gear. My, these gear rolls must be really bad. Crit rate 8. Crit rate 4. He's already got that on. 12. 7. 8. Okay, he's got nothing on this. Oh, that's why. Okay. So he must have had so much before we didn't have to worry about it on his runes. A one-man wrecking machine? I mean, he could be if we had enough attack speed. Well, we'd have to have crazy attack speed, and he would need to proc the horseshoe way too often. I don't think he's going to be a one-man wrecking machine. I don't, I don't think we can get that fast. Maybe if we put the blood goblet on him, this, because then we'd have 40% additional attack speed all the time. Oh yeah, this was the issue with this though. When the wearer launches an ultimate skill, he gets 20 crit rate. Well, he's only going to launch an ultimate skill one time, right? It's not like he's it's not like he's as polta to where he's doing an ultimate skill every 15 seconds and then if we put something if we put attack speed on her, she'll go down to like 12 seconds ultimate. This guy, we want him to go into ultimate and never go into ultimate again, so he will never get this crit rate but that one time for 10 seconds. So it's kind of kind of sucks for him 50 percent extra attack speed for 10 seconds at least it can trigger every 10 seconds we just got to get 20 percent hit though that 20 percent i wish they'd up that 20 percent 20 percent's no problem when you have sutha hitting for 10 times on one move for her ultimate but for a guy like this it might be much harder all right let's see what we've got down here now we don't have to worry about critical damage or attack crit rate we just need something. 16? Yes, please. That's going to help us. Ah, we're still so far away. How are we so far away? I don't understand what's going on here with crit rate. Eight? It is in the gulf between understanding. I don't remember playing a lot of heroes in season two and it being that difficult to get crit rate like 100% for me. Especially when I see something like 11 and 16 on runes. Then I come over here and I see... Oh, we're, we're supposed to be using the crit rate glove. We're using critical damage. Okay, now it makes sense. I, am not <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Something's not right. Okay, now we can compare it against that other gear because we're going to use the same gloves. I think we had two critical damage. Let's find out. Yeah, it's on them right now. All right, we'll use the same gloves. We're just going to use a different gear set. Now what are we at? We should be over. Good. Now we can give this back to Espolta. This can be attack with attack speed now we can focus on some kind of attack speed skill haste i am not a pillar of upholding i will make the talent pay where's that crit rate she's at 103 okay good now for our boy here we just got to do attack along with attack speed nothing did you try the horn the blue one what is the horn the blue one ah this these horns these horns when the wearer launches a basic attack there's a three percent attack speed is granted for three seconds this effect stacks up to 10 times so we're talking about 30 percent additional attack speed plus what does this other attack speed go up to i gotta go summon 35 so 60 when the wearer launches a basic attack for three seconds, though, we're not going to get 10 stacks. It's impossible. He's only going to be attacking at most, like, even, even if he was had a high attack speed, say, once a second, even at one second attack, he would only ever have three stacks, right? Nine? Uh, that wouldn't. We're better off just using this 
and not worrying about the crit rate. Like just using it for the attack and the attack speed. And we'll do that after we see what this procs for. Like how fat, how often this procs. So if I look for attack and I'm trying to go, there's, I have no attack and attack speed. None. I can't even try to roll for it. There's just none. So we've got to use that for his crit rate. Okay, we'll just go with what we have. Attack with skill haste. That's fine. Skill haste, enlightenment, attack percentage. Attack percentage 12. I mean, this one's pretty damn good. On the battle skill. Yeah, yeah. So skill haste is still good. We, we do gain. It's only knocking it down from 10 to 9.7. But we still gain some, right? But really, we just want that attack speed. But like I said, to get it at one second, I don't know. We're, we're not going to be able to do that. We did pick up attack speed on uh, the gear set. And we're going to ignore 20% defense when we attack with that gear set. Let's put him in. Let's put him in a normal team. Let's put him in this gear set because we're ignoring 20% defense. Let's put him back in a regular team with Espolta, what we just ran, and Taldi. Because regardless, attack speed is still going to increase our damage if he can attack fast enough because he's, he just does basic attacks, right? So if he can basic attack like crazy, we change his gear to get more attack speed plus ignore 20% defense. We've got this same set on. got the same gloves on that we had on the other set so the only thing we changed was this gear and then we went from critical damage to attack because this has a lot of crit on it and they're still geared the same they're still geared exactly the same that we just ran okay let's see let's see if ignoring 20 percent of that defense is gonna be some uh be something amazing plus that additional attack speed because really, that additional attack speed, getting him to attack more in his uh, demon form, not staying it. We know he's going to stay in it with this crew that we have right now. But being able to attack more in that demon form with that basic attack faster, that should up our damage. And ignore 20% defense versus before. We just were getting four additional attack per critical damage we had. This should be better for him. Don't you think? I think so. I think we're going to see more damage. And with this team, what did we get before? Is this the team we got 45 million? He did 33.4 million with the horseshoe here. Uh, Espolta with roots, 8.6 million. And then Taldi always does his 2.2. So 45 million is what we got. Can we step it up? It'd be pretty cool. Do a basic attack so you could be able to... Uh, mm, no, I tried that. We tried that with... No, we didn't try it with the horn. I tried it with the eyeball. The eyeball says when you do an ultimate, you get 20% attack. 20% damage to your attack, right? So I was thinking the eyeball, once he's in his ultimate form, he'll just stay that way and always get 20% attack. Maybe. Maybe it's going to be programmed that way. But it didn't work with the eyeball. Zero increase in damage. Of course, we get the attack and the attack percentage, but zero increase damage if I put on... To test it, what I did is I looked at his ultimate, what his ultimate was hitting for when he's in demon form. And then I put the, um, the statue on him, mana core statue with the same attack and attack percentage. But of course, that's going to increase his battle skill. I put that on him and just looked at his ultimate again, like what he was hitting for his basic attack. No increase. So the eyeball does nothing. So I'm guessing that if we put blood on, right when he turns into a demon, he's going to get 10 seconds of increased attack. And then after that, we'll never see it again. Because he's not going to come out of it. But we'll try it. We'll definitely try it. It might be just nice just to have that continuous. But I think right now he's attacking so fast. Look, he's got 250% up right now. It's on a 10 second cooldown. He's got to hit that 20% when it comes out. It's not easy to hit that 20% to be honest. You could, you could miss it a lot, right? You could have bad strings of 80% and not get it. Like right now, we haven't seen it yet, right? There it is. So it'll be up for 10 seconds. Let's see how long it stays off. Where's the stopwatch? What do I need? A clock? I want a clock. I want a stopwatch. Hmm. 
What's this new clock thing for Windows? They used to have a stopwatch. I know, it's back up again. I'm just going to count little uh, Mississippis in my head when it goes off. Still up, still up. Well, it went off and went up immediately that time. I mean, it just went off and then he hit that 20% and it went right back up. We got lucky that time. Okay, it's just RNG, whether he keeps it up or not. I think this set's great, though, for somebody that's that functions like this. I'm hoping. I haven't played Dauntless yet, but when we play Dauntless, we might have to try this set versus that other set we were using. It gives us but it gives us crit rate it, it's so good because that set gives us 10 percent crit rate and then we put a critical damage rune on the left hand side so we are picking we've got critical damage substat so we're picking up picking up a lot of attack from that overall i think that that's a much better gear set because we don't have to worry about so much crit rate and i don't think 20 percent less damage for all basic attacks even for dauntless you think that's going to be a huge difference in those two sets Second best legendary for season three, besides Rook. I mean, it already kind of looks like that. I haven't seen anything. Like, when I look at our damage numbers, we haven't seen anything that comes close. If we look over here at Rook's craziness, and then we look at everybody else, there's no one that comes close to 60 million. 37 million with Ice Blast. And we can definitely get more out of the Ice Blast if we gear differently. Like, gear for having that 20% crit rate built in. I mean, when you look at all these 22s compared to 30, and then you go down here to 45, these are all with him. So the 45, 41, 42, 47 are with Azul. And then when I look at Erich, Total Nan, Netta, not a lot. Erich, Total Nan, Felicity, not a lot again. Not looking good. It's not going to look good until we get into like, um, we're, we need to try out Shaltar, but we're going to have to make different gear for Shaltar. We need to try out Felicity. We know, she, not Felicity, uh, Flora. We know Flora. We know other exclusives are going to do well, but how does Azul pair up against those other exclusives, right? We need to find that out. Have an idea. So we need to do a whole bunch of wild testing still, or at least one more wild test with Flora in there. And I think we'll be pretty good with wild. Just to have an idea of what wild... We can we can do more wild teams if we want to. Sure. With the same gear. Just to see like... What goes well with who. But once we see what Flora can do. Then we'll know. Exclusive versus exclusive. And that'll be pretty nice to see. And then we have to do the same thing with Nesjinka. And then a whole bunch of... A whole bunch of different... Dauntless teams though. Because there are some really good teams with Shaltar That will be fun to do. So we can keep it just either epic or we can keep one legendary in there. Sutha, Shaltar, or one other like Vanny or something. Vanny or we put in Nimbus and see how well they do. We can do... And then we can throw in like a whole... Since, since there's so many Dauntless legendaries that are so great, we can throw in a lot of Dauntless legendaries with Shaltar to see how they work out. And then we can throw Dauntless legendaries in together. There's just a lot, right? Dauntless really went hard with all their legendaries that they have for Vortex. We're at 26 and we're only at 70 stacks. I guess that's pretty good. Yeah, I don't think Blue Horn though will work. We're not going to get enough attack speed with Blue Horn for sure. Oh, whoa, Pig, Pig Dog Hunter, what do you say? I was celebrating my birthday on the 27th. All my friends didn't even get a chance to try. What? 20 minutes and it's all gone? Hey, man. Happy birthday. Happy late birthday. It's only been a few days. You were doing uh, some awesome food. You cooked it all up and your friends ate it all? Man, that's terrible. Yeah, the KFC here, though, I'm not I'm not a big fan of. It's, it's actually super greasy and it's not as cool. Well, I like the flat chicken. There's like a chicken patty you can buy here. I'm sure you could buy it at all. It's just like a boneless breast. Kind of like the flat chicken you can buy at McDonald's, the shaka shaka chicken is what they call it here, where you have that big piece of fried chicken and it's all white, white breast meat. Um, they have that here at this KFC, and I like buying that. I like buying lots of that. 
I mean, I guess the chicken's pretty good here. It's not the KFC chicken is is actually pretty good. They just don't have mashed potatoes here, which I'm a little disappointed about. No KFC in Japan has mashed potatoes. Like, how can you do that? What's that about? Yeah, man, happy birthday. That's pretty nice. How's uh, JR doing that? You still you still on that AFK journey, man? Today? Or did you take a break? Let me see who else is streaming AFK Journey. How how I know it's pretty popular. It's a, it's popular because it just came out, right? So it's gonna be very popular. Well, I'm looking at all the people streaming it and I don't see that many well time of day too. It could be this time of day. We got one old boy over here with 72 viewers. He is not French. Then we've got 15 viewers, 20 viewers, 17 viewers, 3, 3, 7, 7, 13. I mean, for a brand new game that just came out. It's not a lot. <laughs> like a big, you know, a big mobile game would have. But I mean, this is Lilith. Lilith is going to advertise the crap out of this along with all their AFK arena, the dislike game, all that kind of stuff. They, they pour crazy money into advertising. I don't know. I don't think this game's going to last long. Just just from what I when I played it. I guess I guess there could be some kind of crazy appeal for it but I just don't think it's going to last that long I have a feeling 38 million doesn't look like we're no we're not doing well at all man 38 mil what what happened here <laughs> all we did is change one gear set to give him more attack speed we still had a 100% chance to crit it's not like we messed with that thing and uh as Polt is doing the same damage because she has the same gear on Toldy's doing the same damage, but you're telling me we dropped? Well, I guess he would normally be at 33 million. But he's not anywhere near 33 million. He's at 28 million. So we're missing, you know, 4 million. 4 or so million. I guess that additional attack speed is far better than ignoring 20% defense. When we've already got to ignore defense up quite a bit we still want to ignore as much defense as possible but again the vortex boss doesn't really have insane defense even at vortex four hmm let's look at these stats so total he's got 4479 with 179 critical damage if we put him in the other gear set 4,400 and 179. 4,900. Four, four, he was at uh, 179, right? So he had much higher critical damage. Lower attack. Ignoring 20% whenever he does his basic attack. I wonder if they have it calculated properly. Ignoring 20% instead of getting 4 attack per critical damage. Interesting. I am not a member of Apoldi. I guess you use what you got, but loss of well, we got a loss of critical damage. Yeah, yeah, but we're still doing better on this set though, is what I'm saying. A loss of critical damage quite a bit, but we still do better on this set. Actually the critical damage should be this. This is what we were using on it. We were using critical damage rune. We were using one of these. So really he had on something like the same critical damage. This is this is what he had on before. Because we always run this set with critical damage rune. Because for every critical damage, we get four. So really, he had about the same stats. Honestly, look. 174, this is what we had on him before, 48. So basically the same stats. But the gear is just different. So we're getting four attack versus ignoring 20% defense whenever he does a basic attack. If it's calculating him doing his basic attack properly. It should. He's in demon form. All he does is a basic attack. I don't know. I think this gear set's just too good for everyone. Like I said, you get the crit rate of 10%. Makes it easier to gear to. We just throw that on him. Okay, let's go to Or. I really want to see what Or heroes can do. So we've done Azul quite a bit. We got all the numbers on the spreadsheet. If you want to see it, it's in the bottom of every one of my videos. Or you can do exclamation mark recipes. And it's there with all the recipes and all the other stuff. Which did better? The um, the normal set did better. 
The one with the swords that go across like that. What's it called? The one that we use for all of our testing. Hold on. You'll see in just a second when I pull it out with her. I guess we'll use the legendaries first. Man, I do not like these legendaries. Oh, man. I hate these Legos. Scrolled. Yes. Now, we are going to have to gear her different because this girl... This girl gets a 100% chance to crit all the time. We've got to gear her differently. Is that what it's called? This set right here? It's called the Aerial? Aerial Ruler Set, if that's what they call it. Hey, new arrivals here. Care to take a look? Yeah. The Aerial Battle Roar. It's like the best set for the whole season, seems like, for everybody. Well... If you have no critical damage, then I guess it wouldn't be that good. But if you have just some kind of critical damage, it's, it's pretty damn nice. So with her, we are going to gear her different. So that means let's go over here and put... Does this guy even do damage? I mean, this weird thing where he puts it 7% of targets max HP up to 350% of his attack. <laughs> they're just... They're so disappointing. You guys don't understand how disappointed I am with these or legendaries. Okay, I'm going to give him the best gear set. That we have it on Azul. And then so now we need critical damage. Crit rate. He's got one on. Great. Now we need attack. Maybe crit rate. Probably doesn't matter too much. Who's that? No, he's already at 100%. So we'll just put... I just went to skill. I just went to crit rate 15. Jeez. Okay, he's at 105%. This guy does not do buffs. He just does damage based off of like max HP stuff. Okay, we got to stick with the, the same artifacts we've been using on everyone else. So I'm just going to give this dude roots. We're not going to go crazy. We're going to use the same stuff we've been using on everyone. Where the hell are the roots? Oh, okay. All right, so he's good. He's in gear set one. We're going to put gear set two, uh, three on our girl here. Oh, we got nobody. Here's another problem I don't like about these people. We've got nobody for decreased defense. If you look through all the aura people... There's nobody with like multi-hit ultimates that's worth it. She has a multi-hit ultimate that'll hit three times if she's in blaze state. So it'll only hit one time if she's not. This guy has a weird ultimate to where he'll do damage to all enemies. And then he'll put this thing up if he's in blaze state on the person with the highest attack. And then she's got the um, like domain thing she does where she does one attack. Where are our aura people that do multi-hits? One hit. <laughs> One hit. Who made this team? Who made this this aura people, man? Critical damage. Okay, what does she do? For 10 seconds. Critical damage for 10 seconds. In the next 8 seconds, whenever an aura ally attacks, the hero will assist their attack once. Okay, this might be the one. She might actually... I wonder if she works like Casper. Will she keep applying? Will she apply um, multiple instances? Like refresh Witch's Remains? Because she'll attack when somebody else does a what? I don't think we have anybody else. And then we've got the rare. <laughs> Two times. This is so sad. We'd have to bring in... Well, I guess we could, we could bring in any fire and any uh like right now fire and radiant are together so we could bring anybody that does fire and radiant to bring in so who in fire we could bring in total nan that's who i actually used on my main account to do witches remains but i am curious about this lady so let's try her out curious how she's going to function with witches reporting for duty reporting for duty okay This will be really cool if she keeps applying it. 
All right, gear set two. That's the most accuracy. 137. Might need a little more than that. Critical damage or crit rate. Let's see. Critical. She's well over cap, so we just need something with attack and accuracy. 150 plus 50. Okay, I think we got enough accuracy. May I present you with my new song? Came for a song? I mostly ballads for ancient times. She was talking about a new song, and this guy's talking about a song? These are like the underwater uh, gypsies? Do they sing a lot? 113. All right, now just our main girl. So for this girl, we're definitely going to do her different. Then we've done any other exclusive because where's the eyeball because all we need is critical damage she's got a hundred percent chance to crit which i think is a lot of fun it's been fun for me early game for sure late game i'm gonna be have i'm gonna have to beg for double to triple hits in critical damage otherwise it's like you're not even doing her justice critical damage two Two hits again. Attack with a critical damage one hit. What about critical damage and a flat attack? Oh my god, it's three hits. Yes. Alright, and then we go for critical damage gloves. I wonder if you have you guys been farming venom nine since we had that new event and did you guys get a mythic i farmed it just for the event i got a few pieces of legendary gear for my account and we got bread to make up for it you know and we got all those rewards for the event but i did not get a mythic i didn't expect to either you know it's, it's very hard to get i don't need crit rate for this critical damage that 297 it's rocking critical damage there with a little bit of attack and then a little bit more attack okay that's fine 5297 that is pretty sweet she should do fairly well i mean not as i don't think she's going to do anywhere near as good as azul but i think she should do fairly well i will be surprised if this lady and this team does as well as azul I hope so. I hope she's right there with him. That would make me feel pretty happy. I just don't know. Okay. So we want him to go ahead of her. Because we want him to do this little thing that follows her if it's available. So we'd have her go first. Him after. I'm not sure how she's going to shoot this thing off. Him after. And then her after him. I don't know how long he's going to take to cast either. So we'll just do it. Whoa. 22 seconds. Yo, this guy thinks he's like this guy acting like he's amazing powerful like uh Lorenthal or something because he's not <laughs> 23 seconds you know people who have 23 seconds are people like um we have skills into him right yeah we got skill scrolls what's the amazing one that re mithrasy mithrasy she's so amazing she revives everybody keeps everybody alive she's 23 seconds it it's, makes sense on her but on this dude I would need skill haste to keep him up. I'm not going to worry about it. I'll just keep the other two together. As long as we can get decreased defense. We'll see how she works with that decreased defense. I want to see if she procs the ultimate. And then if she refreshes decreased defense like Casper's supposed to do, this would be pretty sweet. She did one hit for that ultimate. No witches remains proc. There we go. She fired off again because somebody else did some move. She's refreshing it. She's refreshing it. I saw it refresh once. Dude, refresh right now. But she only gets to like assist attack one time for each aura. Okay, stop right now. She's going to assist attack. I don't think she refreshed it. Maybe that was just the boss doing its move. No, I don't think she's refreshing it. <laughs> Maybe. 
maybe I didn't see what I thought I saw. But at least she's getting Witch's Remains up, but it's not immediately, so it's kind of weird. It could be off of an attack that somebody else does. And her damage is low. Like, everybody else's damage is always low. I mean, she's at 70%. Okay, let's keep it at that. Maybe this is Azul. Let's find out. I would love to see some numbers. Pull two epics today? Neither one was... Oh, you're still looking for Dargo? Banner's gonna end. Without me... Oh, you're summoning on a banner. Oh, you mean the Season 3 banner, right? How many summons have you done total on Season 3 banner? Like overall, all the summons, how many did you do on season three? Oh, you got one mythic and five Lego pieces? Damn, man, nice. I got like five Lego pieces, I think. But no mythic. Not lucky enough for that. That's pretty cool. I hope you got a useful one. Maybe if you got a cool one this early in the game, it'll help you with some score. Like get your, get your damage up a little bit. Five legendaries, zero Dargo. Yeah, I don't know how many times you've summoned because I feel like I've gotten all the epics, but I summoned almost 300 times on the banner. Flat attack gloves? But are they gloves that do 35% additional damage when you have decreased defense up? Because that would make up for it. I was lucky enough to get a full set piece for my girl right here. The one that this exclusive that I have on my main account right there, the mermaid. Um, critical damage gloves. Legendary gear, critical damage gloves, and then I got a weapon and a helmet, same set piece, to where you do 200% additional, no, 50% additional damage if you have, you know, up to 200% more attack than the enemy. And I'm using her on the Vortex boss with Snarl. Snarl has 100% uptime on decreased attack, so his attack's low, her attack's gonna be high. They were critical damage gloves, which are awesome because she already has 100% chance to crit always. So it worked out really well. Like the three piece gear set I got her for her out of like the five pieces that dropped, it was insane. Midnight, there is. There's a 99 cent epic selector box coming very soon. I think by April the 10th. Yes, really soon. Save your dollar bill, man, it's coming. It was a healing one. Oh, 20% damage heals you when you're below. Hmm. I guess maybe for like a DPS running first in Goblin. If you wanted to put it on something like that. Yeah, I like how the heroes say weird stuff. I was thinking about this today. If we took a, a clip of the heroes voices and then we put it to where people could make it say it sometimes on screen, you know, like I really like Garius where he's like, um, boring, <laughs> so boring. We could take his and we could play it sometimes. We could do something so you guys could make it pop up and say it. I'm sure there's a lot of other clever ones out there. Or like when he says, you've chosen victory. Who says I'll conquer all? Does better according to my testing. We will, we're doing our own testing, my friend. We're about to find out. Who does better? We got some massive testing going on. Actually, we need to get our testing sheets ready to go right here. Since we're already done with... What's this called? Corrosion. We've done Ice Blast to get a comparison. We've done everything we needed to with Azul and everything to do with our people over here for Shadow. We did a little bit of Wild just to have a good comparison. Now we are over here with... I don't even know their names. I don't know how they spell their names. We'll see in just a minute when we put them on our list here. You got to get Eat Flames. Oh, yeah, eat for, from Dane. Eat Flames, idiot. You did a roll on a legendary HP chess piece? Four times. Hey, man, what's wrong with that, right? Hey, man, that's good. Four hits in the defense percentage? I would use that. HP percentage, because that's going to make the person get hit by this lightning bolt. They'll have the highest max HP. For now, anyways. And then they'll still have really good defense off of it. I guess, I guess you'd have to see what it increases. If it's HP percentage along with defense percentage, it should be really good. But it doesn't match any kind of gear set, so... You know. What would you use in the way to go with Dargo and Rook? 
you've got um, whatever whatever's gonna do the most <laughs> corrosion. Do you have whisk? Did you get that legendary whisk? Sacred Deer or Whisk? Definitely play either of the legendaries. I'd rather have Whisk than Sacred Deer, but you can never do the same kind of corrosion stacks. And then after that, we didn't really try any of the other ones. Yeah, use Whisk for sure. And then who else? If you don't have Dargo, you definitely want Dargo. I don't know. We didn't really try anybody else. Who else was there? It's weird because we did Rook, Dargo, Whisk. Sacred Deer, Dargo, Whisk. Uh, Sabrina Dargo Whisk, but Sabrina eats. She's a rare and she eats Corrosion, so you can't use her with Rook. We did Sabrina Dargo Sacredia, then we tried Sacredia Dargo Whisk again with different gear sets on. Whisk? Yeah, but um, Dargo does better than Whisk for single target. Dargo was pulling in more damage than Whisk, and... Whisk is awesome with Witch's Remains because he hits more. He hits more times, so you you really don't have to worry. No, Dargo does too, right? Dargo hits five, Whisk hits seven, and Dargo is a little bit weird because when we put Dargo with Witch's Remains, Dargo, like his animation is very strange. He casts his move, the orbs come out. He does his ultimate, but he only places the orbs in front of him. It's not like he does his ultimate and the orbs hit, and then you can have somebody a half second after him. And you might possibly have Witch's Remains up. It's like he casts it, but he only casts these orbs. And then those orbs have a travel time. And they all then start to move toward the boss. It's really weird. And then once they hit, you know, it's just like something like Eric, right? You just make it two, three seconds after they do their ultimate just to make sure. Just to make sure you give them enough time to try to apply it. Enough time for their moves to hit. I mean, we're at 90, 100 stacks with 26 million. This is nowhere near Azul so far. And if she was at, and, and you can tell right now, like even her damage, it doesn't even matter what the pickup damage of other people is. We're using a set on her to give kind of really her max damage, right? And if she can't do what Azul would do in a turn, which would be 33 million, we got Azul with the horseshoe doing 33 million multiple times. If she can't reach 33 million, we're in trouble. If she's only at 20 million, we're already at 110 stacks. There's an issue with max HP, right? It's not a, it's not a, well, it really is a programming issue. There's an issue with max enemy max HP when we fight the vortex boss, when we fight chief challenges, because they don't have an enemy max HP. They've got to have something because we are getting damage based off of it, but we don't know what it is. And it's not that great because it's whatever they set it to be, really. Right? We don't have enemy max HP because we do damage and the bar goes up. Same thing with the chief challenges. The bar goes up. And I don't know about the in-game boss if she's going to be super viable there because all aura does damage based off of enemy max HP, ultimately, really, when they're in play state. So it just makes them perform very badly. Like right now. And I didn't... We're getting... It looks like we're actually getting Witch's Remains up pretty decently with this one girl. So we'll stick with her. Although on my main account, just so I can get Witch's Remains, I put it on Total Nan because Total Nan has five hits on her ultimate. Plus she does really well with damage on her own. So I could put her in Witch's Remains with my... The two DPS that I was using. The epic DPS and this legendary. And I came in like rank 84 on the live server, which isn't bad, really. But I think we would probably rather use Total Nan than even this girl. She's pulled in the same damage. I mean, Total Nan will probably do more damage than her. And she's not as consistent. Total Nan has uh, the five attacks. And she's not doing much with that extra hit based off of enemy max HP. If the boss had a, like a HP though, if he had like a legit HP, they would be doing well. It's, it's, this is really sad. I mean, they made these guys, right? They should know when they test them on stuff. The enemy max HP is not where it's not where it's at, you know?
Hmm. Only 25 million. Uh, well, the thing is, Horseshoe is really almost best in class. For sure, in Epic, I think it's best in class for Azul. Because it, it did only 2 million less than Shadow Spawn, which is a legendary. It's supposed to be doing better than his exclusive. Uh, Rook, we had the eyeball on. It didn't matter with Rook. I mean, he's going to pull in the most damage. It didn't matter what we had on Rook. And this lady, I'll have to try different artifacts separately to see if we can increase her damage from this 25 million. But our intent here is not to try to put the best in slot, right? We're trying to use all the same kind of artifacts on everyone if we can to try to get an idea of where they all fit in the hierarchy of doing damage on the Vortex boss. Okay, now I've got all their damage, right? Oh, total damage. I mean, 34 million isn't bad necessarily. And I know we can move this up because that dude right there sucks. The Lucian dude. Oh, God, I don't even... I got him and I got the other girl and it's just like, man, it's such de depression. Depression is what I call it. All right, redeploy. How do I spell this name? Ammonia. She's got gear set one with eyeball. Okay, this guy's got gear set three. One kiss, three with roots. So this girl's gonna have gear set two with witches remain. Okay, we're gonna change her out though, because I don't believe in her getting up witches remains that often. She gets, she only has one shot. That I mean, we've got we've got nobody in aura that does multi hit, like legit multi hit. It's it's really sad. So sad. I'll not allow pests to disturb the I think this is going to be far more consistent. One thirty one. Can I get critical damage with a little bit of uh, accuracy? That'd be nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, we should be set then. All right. Total Nan's looking good. She's well over crit rate. We don't even need a critical damage crit rate gloves like we normally have, but we're going to use the same gear we use on everyone. We're not going to switch that up. Keep her the same. This dude is out of here, though. Let's get in the other one that still is very depressing, too. That does the domain. But it does give us 20% additional damage to aura heroes, so that'll help out. At least something, right? <laughs> something, please. Three. Let's see, critical damage. Okay, 100% chance crit. We're good. Okay, Total Nan's going to go first. Does all the attacks right away. Right at one time. So we can go right after that. But we want this one to go right after. And then we want that to go after. 12, 12.5. And then 13. Okay. Perfect. And we got a resistance lead. Let's go. Have you tested Casper? I haven't. What did you want to test Casper? Casper, like, just to see how he does compared to all these other people like overall for damage how, how he does uh, that's a good thing to do for sure 
And we will. And we'll test everybody we can for sure. But we just got to go through. <laughs> right when we're done with all these aura heroes, we're kind of caught up on all the new heroes. For the most part. If we want to go check out some other heroes, say like for who was it? Midnight? Was it Midnight? Yeah. If we want to go check out somebody else for Midnight, we could. We could go Rook, Whisk, and then what else is left? What other heroes are left to play in Corrosion? Besides Sacredia, Dargo, Whisk. And Sabrina we're not going to use because Sabrina is the rare that actually eats Corrosion. Is there anybody else? Yeah, but was there anybody else? Because you wanted to play your Rook with Whisk, which is great. But you want another person to apply Corrosion too. Who's that? Let me go to that website that has all the characters on it. Let's see what they have for Corrosion. Um, do they even have them separated by damage? No. I just had to pick poison. poison. Surprised they don't have like a corrosion damage type here. They've got race, orientation, element. Gragrur? Who is that? Is that an epic? I don't think they've updated this website. They haven't. <laughs> uh, yeah, season three is right there, but there's nothing for season three. Oh, come on, man. Update. This is. Update your website. Oh, well. I guess I can look after after this fight. I'll check it out. You don't have room for anybody else, so all you've got room for is Rook and Whisk. That's it? Because really, you want to try to get one more in there if you can. You want those corrosion stacks up. One more doing some max damage. Preferably Dargo with the Whisk doing some max damage. Getting that Corrosion stack up really fast. So that Rook can just go ham. With all those damage numbers. I don't have floor, so I wonder if my team with Erich, Total and Casper would be better than uh, Beldell. No. I can tell you right now, no. No. Beldell, which we need to test Beldell because we've done the girth and testing. No way. No way that Wild is going to be better than Beldell without uh, Flora. It's just not going to happen. Beldell is a single target exclusive that does amazingly well with Ice Blast. And you can see right here, Girthen, Beldell, and Shinna do 37 million. Right? And then if I look down here at the Wild team, Erich, Total Nan, and Felicity do 27 million. That's 10 million difference. So even if we replace Felicity with Casper, Total Nan, Erich... It's not going to reach 37 million. I don't think it's going to do any more damage than this right here, to be honest with you. Because we got Felicity there. Uh, I meant no Beldell. You don't have Beldell. Yeah, I still don't think. Do you have Shinna? If you have Shinna, Blood, and Girth, that's like top tier, baby. For anybody. It's looking like, like the hierarchy for damage on the Vortex Ball so far. We haven't tested everything. We're going to get to Dauntless and all those other teams soon enough. So far, what we've seen is if you have an exclusive like Rook, Azul, Beldel, Nesjinka, what's the other one? The fire one that we just said a minute ago. Then, of course, more damage than a normal team, right? More damage than just regular normal legendaries and epics. So more damage than what we see right here for the Ice Blast. Absolutely. Than what we see for Blood and Girth and Shinna. But if you don't have an exclusive, Ice Blast is the best. So far. I would like to take Ice Blast up against Shaltar and see how Shaltar does. I know I know I've always played with Shaltar and I can he can do a lot of damage. I can even make him look like he does a lot of damage, but how is that compared to this? You know, can Shaltar pull in 19 million if there's enough Dauntless? doing their ultimate after he does his ultimate. And the problem with that is I need to, I need at least one legendary in there with Shaltar to really perform well. But I still don't, I still don't think it's going to be 37 million. But we'll try it out. So far, it looks like, well, second best in what we've tested. Do I think 
Do I think uh, Azul's going to be better than something like uh, Beldel or Flora? I don't know. I don't think he's going to be better than Flora, do you? I've never played Flora myself, so we need to test her out, and we're going to have to put Flora in different gear because she's the one that does... Doesn't Flora usually geared like a Shaltar? A whole bunch of attack enlightenment damage. I'd have to go look. I'd have to go look at like the top people who play her and see what she's actually geared like. But I don't know if Azul is going to do more damage than, than Beldel. Mm, we could try that out right now very easily because we've already got those teams kind of made up. I don't think so though. Or maybe they're similar. Let's just say that. Which would be really good because Beldel is strictly single target. If Azul is doing the same damage as an exclusive, that, that exclusive, then he's better off because he can do AoE. And he can survive much easier. Have, have you guys been seeing Witch's Remains go up? I'm sure it is. She's got five hits. She's got plenty of accuracy. She's been getting Witch's Remains up. Without a doubt. Because 50 stacks, 22 million is pretty damn good. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Witch's Remains. This lady's putting 20% additional damage. And then we stay in our blaze state longer with that domain. Because we don't take as much aura when we do our ultimate there on what's her name i could never remember her name i don't know how to say her name that's the problem amon leda amon i'm just gonna call her amon for short okay you do you guys know the mermaid right amon leda i think it's amon leda but that's a weird name like that doesn't even roll off the tongue nicely let me see if that's a real somebody's name out here pronunciation i'm on pronunciation no <laughs> i don't see anybody doing a pronunciation of this name a mona i see a mona but no nothing like this some lightning shenanigans with other uh three slots what's up Yeah, I don't know where he's going to... We're just going to have to see. I have no idea how he's going to place against the other ones that we've been... The other ones we haven't tested yet. The other exclusives. Because obviously, I don't have those exclusives on my account. I do know that they rock it as far as how well they do on uh, the damage charts for the the Vortex boss. Like in a normal season. I know Flora rocks it. I know the Dauntless teams rock it. When you see Avelius along with Nesjinka, they kill it. Can Azul do more damage than, than them? I don't know. What kind of lightning, though? That's an issue, right? What support? That's the problem with them, though, this season. What kind of support are you going to run with them? If you don't have... Torin, the legendary, what kind of good support do you have for them? We're playing them on an unkillable team, yeah. Just to see what their potential is, but... On a real five-man team... This season, what the hell are we gonna play? That's why I don't even want to. I don't even want to mess. I gotta make one team, one Necrosis team, for whatever Chief Challenge we fight. And I'm gonna have to use Megan. I'm gonna have to use Estella because for my Lightning team, I'm gonna want to use probably Nathaniel. I just don't have options. I don't have any of the legendaries. What else? Like what Lightning support legendary is there? For keeping people alive. It's sad, right? I mean, following seasons, we'll get more, right? We'll they'll flesh everything out. But right now, I don't think we have much for Necrosis. And we don't have much for Lightning. So I don't know who you're going to play that with. Thirty-five million? What did we get? Thirty-four million before when we were pulling in the other. The, we had the other legendary. Linkos, in place of this fairy one, and then we used the other. Which is remains lady, which I don't think is doing. I think, definitely, I want to use. Total man.
Now, with this 20% additional increase in damage, only from our exclusive and this domain, is it worth it to be at 16 point, you know, 16% damage? If we bring in that epic, do you think that epic's gonna make up for it? Because that epic does pretty good damage. And it's all AoE damage, just like she's all AoE. Amon is all AoE damage too. So we still got one more round. The boss doesn't ignore it until after this whole rotation right here. So 40 million's not bad. I'm actually pretty happy with 40 million. Oh, well, no, my people are dying anyways. Okay, she's still alive. She's going to be the last one there because she has that uh, can't die buff. That doesn't work now. Come on, knock her out. 40 million. Okay, flat. Nice. I mean, there's hope. There is a little bit of hope here I'm seeing for my aura team to do decently well. I'm not trying to be number one because I'll be using them. In, like, I'm, I'm enjoying them in dungeons. She's doing really well. This exclusive is doing really a lot of fun in dungeons because, you know, we don't need crit rate. What'd she do? Oh, that's not right. Uh, 27 million. All right, so we had Tonal Nan with gear set two witches remains always right yeah, and now this new little fairy girl Dantha. Gear set three with roots, just like the other legendary. And then she's in set one with eyeball. Okay. Okay, so not bad. I mean, 40 million, I'm, pr I'm pretty happy with 40 million. It's not, it's not the best. It's not the worst. It's 40 million. I'll take it. And we did increase her damage from 25 million with using, and this legendary did more damage too, compared to this guy. Why is this guy so terribly bad? He just doesn't do a lot of damage, and he's supposed to put that little thing that follows um, Amon around, and then it will do like a lot of damage based off of enemy max HP. 7% up to like five, like up to 800% of attack or so. It's supposed to be insane damage based off of enemy max HP. But the way this game works with enemy max HP, it's just. Linkos is absolute garbage. Don't get it. Don't get how he can be so bad as a legendary. Don't they play test this stuff? I mean, if there was like a spot for him somewhere, if there was just somewhere he was going to just do so, so, so well, uh, we could talk about it. Now, she should do really well with roots. Obviously, we get that 15% additional attack. Gear set three. There we go. We're just switching the same gear set. We're switching the same artifact. We're switching the same runes. Critical damage and attack, of course. They all have a 100% chance to crit. And that is it. Let's see if this does better. Should do better. I think from our previous testing, she did do better. Okay, so we can just do it 20, 20, 20 across the board. 12, 12.5, 14, 26. Okay, let's see if her damage, the epic's damage makes up for those legendaries. 
The legendaries were just there to help out your aura team do damage, right? And they don't do that because they don't pull in any damage themselves and they don't really help out that much. Let's see if this epic, since she does such good damage, can she bring us higher than 40 million? Dintha is not bad, though. She's really not bad because she keeps us in that blaze state and she increases our damage by 20%. Is the one or legendary I pulled? Oh, he is the one that you got? Yeah, I don't I don't know why he's so bad. And he's definitely not gonna do anything by himself. He's not supposed to function that way. Well What is he what does he read on his ultimate when he puts that little follower companion on somebody? It doesn't have to be an aura person, right? Does it? Can it be anybody? Can it be anybody that like attacks extremely fast and do something? The problem is the damage that it does. Like that's it, right? It's not really doing a percentage base of the damage. It's doing 7% of the enemy's max HP. To a percentage of your attacks. So if it was something with high HP, but again, we don't fight anything like that ever. It's crazy. Actually casting the additional thingy. I didn't watch for it. Does he? Does he even put it up? Maybe he does it. Maybe he's broken. We need to check for that little thing just coming up, right? Let's just bring him in with our main girl on the test dummy and just see if he cast it. Or we could do it in here at slow speed and see if he casts it. And then see if we can see it, like what damage it does. It's any kind of damage. That's true. I don't know. Bitter. I'm not, I'm not sure if he's casting it or not, is he? I think I've seen some kind of little glowy thing come up before. But I didn't really pay attention if it was attacking, how often it was attacking, what it was doing at all. But you're right, maybe he's not working properly. But I would like these legendaries to perform, right? Up their damage multipliers or something? I just hope for more than 20. Like, if I can get up to 45 million, what would 45 million be close to? 45 million would be like Azul kind of damage. I don't know. I'm pretty happy with 40 million. I can't, I can't complain with that, honestly. 40 million is at least more damage than the 37 million that I got with Shinna, Blood, and Girth. But Shinna, Blood, and Girth aren't geared for 80% crit rate. Just depends on the five team bonus like the five team bonus that i've got for radiant it's easy we've got sonarl and then i have ardrith in there so that's a really easy team for me to make right now sonarl is just kind of just too good and then i could do the same thing with what does ice go with ice blast and what is it this season ice and uh poison ice and poison so i've got a good team for ice and poison so i could easily go with fur bath Ogok, which I have both of those, and then have these three in here. Which might be more consistent down the line. I'll have to see. Because they're so easy to play, so easy to gear. Critical damage buff. He gives it a 20% attack buff to himself and then to Girth because she'll have the highest attack. We can put Roots on them to get a lot of attack on each of these if we wanted to. We can use Statue. The Statue works so well with the battle skill. Shinna is amazing to give everybody more damage and to get those uh, Ice Crystals up. Hmm. But these are fun. These are fun because they're new and then they do do AoE damage, right? All these guys, even this Epic right here that's supposed to do fairly well, she does AoE damage too, so... Good to run into Venom. Faye? Faye Meander? I think we need the thing is we need more areas for these things to shine right it seems like everybody always wants to concentrate on the vortex boss because we do it every day and it's just something to do we need more areas single target damage when we go through all the dungeons the only dungeon we don't need single target is venom so when we go through grave of curse single target we go through grave of rot single target ancient battlefield single target we need more areas for all the different kind of heroes that we have to shine is what it comes down to. AoE for goblins, sure, but 
I mean, we can use, you know, you can use a lot of things in Goblin. And then what else do we have? Just the normal story stuff. I feel like we need another boss out here that really benefits. It really takes a lot of damage off of AoE. If we just had that. If we had another type of Vortex boss that deals, you know, and we do that at the end of the season. For eight days, we have that. But I don't want my guys, I don't want I don't want anybody's legendary to shine only for eight days. I think that's really sad. I got perk last season. I didn't get perk, but people who got perk last season and then he shines for eight days at the end of the season, that's sad. But I don't see Linkus shining at the end of the season. I don't see that guy working out at all. She's doing well at 29%, 30%. And for Witch's Remains, for somebody like Total Dan to be applying that, I think she does decent damage for that. Way more than Toldy does, but Toldy's helping out the whole entire team. Why would people only be a uh, good single target heroes benefits? With good, yeah, yeah, right, exactly. Why should only people with good single target damage benefit? Exactly. That's why I say we need three different vortex bosses each season, only for three seasons. That's nine months. So, say season, like say whatever season. This season right now we're fighting this vortex boss. Next season the vortex boss has two little, little diamonds that, that float next to him that take damage. Maybe they do some kind of debuff. That way we get a little variation in the boss. And then the season after that we have a different vortex boss. No, same guy, same looking guy, right? But his moves are a little bit different. That way we have three variations of this Vortex boss and we will never get tired of that because they will change over a nine month period. I think that would be pretty cool. And it'd be very easy for the company to do that because it's the same guy. We're not trying to change his look. We're not trying to change his animations. We keep his skills the same for at least two of them. The second one, we just give him some little, you know, little crystals floating around like they do in any game. That way they can take damage and then they can give us like a little debuff or give him a buff from that crystal that we can take off. And then the next one just has a little different variation of skills. That would keep it fresh. Like that would keep me excited. Like I'm going into next th season thinking, okay, this boss can take AOE damage. What teams am I going to play now? And then people like Sacredia, if you want to play her with Rook, would really shine because she's doing a lot of AOE damage off of just her passive every half second putting up corrosion on everything you know those kind of heroes would really shine then yeah well it's better to wait an entire season than not have it at all if we had another boss to do at the same exact time I have no problem with that I just don't know like a world boss it would just be another boss, but it'd have to be something significant, right? They'd have to incorporate it in a way that it's part of a big leaderboard, just like the Vortex boss. And I've got no issue with that at all, believe me. Vortex boss and another boss that's AoE, we definitely need four times speed then. If I'm going to do this boss and another boss, I need you to make it so I can do it faster. You know, whenever you, whenever you include new content into a game, you got to make that... You know everything faster and easier for us to complete otherwise we're playing the game all day long we don't have any time for anything else but you only you get to pick which one you want mm, that wouldn't be fair damage wise though if it was on the same leaderboard though that wouldn't be fair if you only choose one a day yeah i don't know that'd be weird for damage I guess, I, I mean, I guess they could. They could blend all the damage in together, but I don't know. You're not going to wait three months? You're already waiting three months. What are you talking about? You're, you're already waiting three months right now to fight an AoE boss for eight days at the end of the season. Every season. You're already waiting for that. So this is less damage for some reason. What did we change? Okay, so we brought this epic in and we're getting less damage then with that one legendary because our exclusive is so good like the exclusive is doing so much damage that that 20% additional on her ultimate 
and keeping her in play state longer so she can keep doing her ultimate is far more important than this epic that actually does do good damage. I mean, not like far, far more, but 3 million more. Why are we up at 180 stacks? Why are they dead already? Okay, there. That's good. I mean, not a not a huge loss though, right? So if somebody only had the exclusive, I mean, we got to do some testing without the exclusive, which I think are going to be pretty bad, pretty bad numbers without the exclusive. I don't think Aura on the Vortex is, is where it's at. Unless you have this exclusive to help you out some. Did I do 19 million? 19 million, 969, five. I think that's right, okay. Then we had our Epic over here doing 10 million, nice. I mean, 10 million is, is really good. Compared to all the other ones that we had do 10 million, she's she's doing legendary type numbers for damage. Uh, 10 million, 654,000. 504, 5, 540. Total Nan should be pulling in what she did before, right at it. What's her name? Theo something? H E I N. We've got a lot of Theos in this game. All right, so here we go. Did you play every... I didn't like AFK Journey. I played it for... I played it two months ago for three hours, and I did not like it at all. I thought it was very boring. I think a lot of you are going to... You guys are probably going to get bored of it after a week. There's no real gear farming. Your, your gear is always the same. You do, like, the AFK gear farming part of it. It's just, it's just running through and doing... Like going to get this treasure chest going to fight this one encounter i didn't really enjoy it <laughs> it's not my thing yeah i wanted it to be fun but it just wasn't for me so here we've got theo hin pulling in 10 million which again if you look at everybody pulling in 10 million with similar gear like she's got gear set three so if we look at it as polter with gear set three in the root zone we can see nine million here on this team but that's not well it's with Toldy and azul We've got Espolta pulling in 10 million up here. We even got 10 million pulled in by Dargo with the same gear set three and roots at 12 million. So Dargo's doing really well there. So Theohan is is doing good damage. But if we make Theohan the main centerpiece along with um, Dantha, I don't think we're going to pull off a lot of damage on the boss. Um, might be okay. We'll see. We'll see. 36 million, 40 million, still not too bad. But who else would we pull in? There's nobody else, right? In order to even... Oh, there are a couple. There's a couple that we've tried out. Like this one we've tried out to where she'll give 20% increased attack up to all aura people. And it would be great if we could play her if she had three hits on her ultimate so we wouldn't have to be bringing in a stupid fire person, total land, to bring our witch's remains. It'd be great. Then we could have somebody with witch's remains that's increasing the damage of our exclusive. But none of these are viable for Witch's Remains. And, oh, that's right. She does this ultimate. That's right. 40% additional ultimate too, but nah, it just wasn't working out. What do you guys think we should try? We should really try all the epics. <laughs> we should go through the gambit and just try them all. Just to see where they fall, like damage wise. It's a lot of runs though. Just to see how sad they are. Okay, 100% chance to crit, of course. Same gear set, nothing's changed.
Okay. I guess we gotta see. You never know. You know something could surprise us. Yeah, B4, what'd you think about it? What have you enjoyed the most about it? I mean, any new game is fun, though. I mean, you gotta agree with that. Any new game you play is always enjoyable. For like a week, two weeks, maybe even a month? I think I asked recently over on a Hap, Halp's Discord what he likes the most about it. Because there was this other game that came out that's in beta right now called Dungeon and Kingdom. I hope they changed the name because there's too many other games that have the same exact name. That is far better than AFK Arena. A AFK Journey. But it's in it's in like open early access for Android only. And it was kind of hard for me to find because the name really is bad. There are too many games that are named exactly like it. And it has the same thing where you run around and you do all the testing sadness. Because <laughs> we're not getting those big numbers. Yeah, well, I mean, we got to clear it out. You know, you got to keep going. You can't only test half of it. You got you to gotta try the rest of them. Oh, we need to see about that corrosion guy that we didn't test. So see stuff like that. It'll sneak by. We didn't, we didn't test that one corrosion dude that we're supposed to test. And I'm going to pull him up right now on my phone and see if I can find out who that corrosion guy is. Did he look good, Midnight? That last corrosion that we did not test? I mean, he must not have looked very good. Let's see what his name is and what he does. Maybe he doesn't pull off a lot of corrosion damage or he doesn't do a percentage base of his damage as corrosion very much. I'm just wondering why we didn't test him. Maybe because nobody could compare to Dargo. Dargo's just too good. Okay. Didn't the banner run out today? The season three banner? Is that done? Actually, I'm inside my game right now. Let me see here. We've got 14 hours on the season three banner. That's it, reset. So by the time we, we play tomorrow morning at reset, that's it, we're done. I could do 35 dice summons on the season three banner and get Rook. Could happen. Yeah, right. Okay, let's go to heroes. Gallery and corrosion. Let's see what we've got. Man, my phone's too small. I can't even read it. I'm like an old person. Or Shadow Corrosion. There we go. Okay, we tried Sacred Ear, Whisk, and Rook. Oh, that guy. No, there's two other ones that we didn't try. And we didn't try that one rare. What does this one rare dude do? 50% of damage is dealt as Corrosion. Okay. And again, 50% damage is dealt as Corrosion. So there are other options. This Grag guy. Oh, that's right. When an enemy inflicted with corrosion dies. So we don't need that part of his passive. But this move does 60% of the damage dealt as corrosion. Hits twice. That's pretty good damage. To enemies inflicted with corrosion. I don't know about this ultimate though. This ultimate doesn't. Oh yeah, yeah. This ultimate sounds good too. But the the ultimate doesn't doesn't have a deal corrosion component to it. I do like this guy's Greg's ultimate where he does 700 attack and a laser beam kind of three by three tile forward, and then it does an additional 300 if there's corrosions on the enemy. But it doesn't state hey 50 percent of that damage goes as corrosion afterwards, so that doesn't work out. It's not gonna work for me. And then this one um, diamond looking guy with these rocks all over him oh yeah he does inflict corrosion when he gets hit we should try that guy out 40 percent of damage base is corrosion and then here he does 40 percent damage base is corrosion and then whenever he's hit he does 15 percent of attack to the attacker so we do have a couple more to chest out we did the rare yeah the rare we did do sabrina we tried out Sabrina and she does eat it. So we don't want to do that. We don't want to eat away our corrosion stacks. 
We want to keep that number really high so Rook can do some massive numbers. This girl is pulling in 18%. Oh, wait, wait. Did we set her up so that she'll give the, the attack increase before our legend? I don't think we did. I think our legendary is doing her ultimate. Crap. I don't think we spaced. We didn't space them out. Our legendary is doing her ultimate. Decreased defense. And then they're both going at the same time. I mean, she's still getting that increased attack. It's just not applying to her ultimate. Crap. She's giving all aura people 20% attack. Damn it. Well, let's see what kind of damage she pulls off. Because our other girl over here pulled off 10 million. If this lady could pull off 10 million with the same exact gear on... And be giving Amon the attack increase. That could be pretty decent. Could happen. Then we'd have to change the timing. But as much corrosion. Yeah, but that one guy, whenever he's hit, he applies that corrosion, right? So he only does 40% of his damage based on his corrosion. Doesn't hit as hard, but whenever he's actually hit... He applies corrosion. So over a long fight like this where we're getting hit, we're getting hit, um, is it two swipes here? Okay, we're getting hit twice there. And then two times again here. So five times he's getting hit per rotation to put up that additional corrosion stacks. He might do okay here. Yeah, Dargo is obviously far superior, right? That we've seen. But we didn't test those other ones, so we don't know. What if we put the same gear we put on Dargo, where Dargo pulled in that 12 million? We just put on gear set three with roots onto those other guys, and we see what kind of damage they do and what kind of damage Rook does. With Whisk with Witch's Remains. And Whisk pulled in. Like, every time Whisk had Witch's Remains, he was always pulling in 7.8 million. With gear set two. So easy to test out. We'll do it on another day, though, for sure. I'm excited to get it to Adventure Rank 28. I think that's going to be the exciting point for me. But how long am I going to be excited once we get to Rank 5? I can already do Harpy 9. I've already got a, a good Vortex team. I do the two domains on Stage 5. So what am I really excited about? I'm excited to go up to Adventure Rank 5. 28 so I can make rank fives. I can farm ancient battlefield soon. That'll be challenging. And then hold all my stamina. Well, no, we'll be able to farm goblin. Okay, that's the exciting part. We'll be able to make teams and try to see how far we can get in goblin cave whenever we reach either tomorrow or the next day. Whenever we reach 28, we're going to move over to goblin cave three. And that's going to be pretty challenging. Yeah, our guys will be rank 5. We can take them up. We can maybe upgrade our artifacts to 20. But doing goblin... At least it's more experience, right? We'll be able to farm a lot of goblin. And then we're just going to wait. Wait till that day 30. So once we reach 28, we're just waiting. Waiting till day 30. Which is going to be like, what? 15 days away? Man, we're just going to wait 15 days? Run the nail on uh, for the battle skill is better. Oh, for the passive ability. Run the nail because he's doing 19%, 15% of his attack is damage. Oh, we could try that after we run. Yeah, but if he's doing percentage of attack is damage, the roots would be best on him. We get him 60, 90% additional attack overall. So I'm sure that would do really well. on like crazy you have two i've been farming uh poison crystals and i've been farming the flame domain as well both of those i've been farming like crazy so i think i can take at least 10 heroes up to level rank five i've been doing a lot it's stage five so it doesn't matter right if i'm i'm not wasting anything i'm saving all my bread still i'm saving all that bread all that bread i got today from the battle pass all the bread i got from days before that i'm saving it because there's no reason to use it i'm gonna wait till we hit that goblin the new goblin 
I'll use it all there. If I can get up to Goblin. So she didn't do as well. Although we might have been able to get up to 40 million if she was given that increased attack. Probably not, but we would do more damage. We would, we would do more than 22 million. I'm not going to save this one. I'm going to wait till I, I run this again off screen and set up the times better. So let me clip this. Oh, they died. I'm going to put 36 mil. Run again. Okay, what's this lady's name? Okay. So what was the other one? With uh we were talking about this guy? Where's he at? I wonder if we have any teams saved still with corrosion. Yeah, uh, yeah, there's a corrosion team. Gear set one with eyeball. We've got gear set three. Oh, this is a different one with whisk. Let's go with gear set three on this guy. No, two. Two with witches remain. Equip. Hundred percent chance to crit. Rook's got what he needs on him, so we'd be taking out Dargo for this guy. <laughs> he sound what's he sound like a Western or a country guy? He's got a funny accent for a rock man. Although I don't know what a rock man's supposed to sound like. Okay, we'll slap roots on him to give him a lot of gear set three. Now we need critical damage here, which is probably on somebody over here. Yep, Dargo. And attack that's on Dargo. Okay. He's set up pretty nice. He's at four four thousand one hundred and eight. That'll go up once we go inside the game with this additional thirty percent attack, plus we get attacked from this gear set here with critical damage. So his passive should do decently well, right? Inflict fifteen percent of attack corrosion to the attacker when it taking damage. But here's the part that I'm confused about. It says No, it says corrosion to the to the attacker, right? Yeah, we're not worried about the round him. We're still doing 15% of attack as corrosion when we're hit. Okay. Right, less damage, it's only 40% instead of 50%. And then here 40%. So less than Dargo, right? Dargo's doing like a thousand for sure. Dargo does a thousand percent of attack at 50. Plus he has Dargo has that passive too to do even more on him. And then Dargo does 400 here at 50. But we've got that fancy passive whenever we're hit. So let's see what he does. Could be could be massive. You never know. Well, if we want this guy to do his ultimate and get a little more corrosion before Rook goes, we'll make Rook a half second after him. Okay, let's see if we can rock 60 million. Here's what we had before, the same setup. 
We had Whisk with Witch's Remain, Witch's Remains gear set too, and he did 7.8. We had Dargo with the same gear that we've got on that new guy, and a Rook with the same gear he's got on right now. 6.9 million. Leonard Skinner. Until you get to poison people up. Yeah, you got to pick two, right? You got to have two domains that you do really well in. I'm not doing, and I'm just, since I'm not, you're playing Shadow. So you got to get that up, right? You've got to do the uh, Lightning Dome, Tempest Domain. I don't want to do it at all. Not until I have to. I guess I will soon enough. When the Chief Challenges start to pop up, I'll do Tempest Domain. Because I do have Espolta. And as long as I have Espolta with Taldi and whatever else, I should... We'll do well. Like, we'll do well against the Chief Challenge, right? Well, it depends. Eventually, I'm going to have to have it. You got to have six teams, so... Three pretty good teams? Yeah, yeah. I don't... I don't have, have no issue making teams right now. And I even ran Venom quite a bit for that... For that event they had. And I think we're going to have another event soon. Shouldn't we be having something soon? I'm pretty sure when it opens up, we're going to have another Goblin event, right? Look at those numbers. Rook is just stupid, man. Rook is... Like, you don't even know what's happening. He's just like... Bombards with these, these, these crazy numbers. Battle skill and ultimate just... Okay, there we go. Now our guy hits, and then he hits afterwards for more damage. But what we really want to see, right? Yeah, corrosion. Overall, corrosion is going to make a big difference, sure. It's going to be kind of hard to tell, though, how good he is. Maybe overall damage. Now, I can tell you when we ran Dargo and Whisk, I'm not sure that we, we took Rook's ultimate and did Rook's ultimate at a different time after... after dargo we might have done whisk with riches witches remains first and then we just did dargo and rook afterwards like at the same time here we've done a half second later so maybe we're picking up a little bit more damage we got the crystal guy doing his ultimate and then rook immediately doing the ultimate afterwards so we pick up a little bit more corrosion every time he does his ultimate this is crazy. 10 stacks, we're already at 12 million, right? I guess it's good. I don't know. We'll see later on once we get past uh, 40 million. See how much time we have left. Your fire radiant does? Yeah, yeah. Radiant's always got everything we need. And then now with Sonaro or even Adolphus. And I've been using Adolphus in my Venom 9. With Snarl. As long as you got a Dolphus and Snarl, you're set. Even if you just have the Dolphus, you're still pretty set, right? So strong. And then Radiant's got anything you could think of. Radiant's got you taken care of. I'm just going to be leveling up my Radiant Fire Team and then my Poison Frost Team. But I think I'm going to be leveling up a lot of additional... Like, it's not just going to be one team of each 10 heroes. I think I got a lot of additional Radiant. I want to. I mean, I do. I have so much Radiant. I've got all the Aura ones, too. So I've got tons of... With Rally, I've got tons... I've got all the Rally legendaries, pretty much. Like, the good ones. I'm missing the exclusive, of course. But I've got so much Rally. So much support. Then we've got all the Aura ones that we're leveling up. And then in Poison, we've got a lot of Poison stuff to level. I've got good support there with Ogok and Furbath. We've got good DPS with Sigrid. Then we've got fire, a lot of single target fire stuff I could do there. A lot of AOE if I wanted to do burn, but I don't have any of the... No, I've got Karf. I've got Dur the flying dwarf one, whatever his name was. Durham, is that his name? Yeah, I got Durham. I got Aratius. So yeah, we got a lot of burn stuff. I've got a lot of stuff we could do. It just depends on what these chief challenges are like. the might of the rats he's hanging with whisk right now um oh uh, yeah but he should be doing more than whisk though and i don't know how much corrosion he's applying like we just can't gauge that i don't know if there's a number going up whenever the boss hits him it's corrosion it's just straight up corrosion damage so i don't know 
I mean, all we got to do is 19% of his attack. And then whatever his inflated attack would be once he zones in with the uh, artifact and the gear. So it would just be 19% of that. Like every time he's hit. So it's not a crazy amount of corrosion, I guess. Not really, because it's not a move. Like whenever we do with Durango and we do with Whisk, it's a move that can crit. And those crit hits are big numbers. So we're doing 40% of that crit hit or 50% even with some of them. And with Durango's passive and Whisk passive to do additional corrosion, doing 19% of just flat attack isn't a lot. Because we're not critting on it. We're just, it's just whatever is attack is, 90% of that's going to the boss. So it's really not that much, I guess. And he's doing below Whisk damage, so it's not good. Because Durango pulled in 12 million with this same gear, and Whisk was at 7.8 million. So this guy needs to be above Whisk, and he's not. Now, I highly doubt he's applying more corrosion to make uh, Rook do better. I think this guy's pretty, pretty bad for what we need. <laughs> I think he's working out. Yeah, well, we need his numbers to be high too, though, for it to really make sense. But yeah, if if, if Rook's final numbers are more than forty million, then he's doing an insane amount of corrosion. But what would he be good for, though? Does he have a big? He's got a. Does he have a big AOE for his ultimate? Would he be good for AOE compared to Dargo? Like if we fight a Mecha Torque again and there's a whole bunch of little orbs, like six orbs out there like Mecha Torque, if he's got a lot of AOE, then it'd be good for that. Uh, the three cross forward. Oh, yeah, the, like the laser beam thing, I call it. Yeah, so if we had if we had him against Mecha Torque, definitely be better than Dargo if Dargo doesn't do a three by three. That way we get corrosion up on... Well, they're not hitting him, though. Those orbs aren't necessarily hitting him to get more. Synchrodia would be best then because she's going to put up she's going to put up corrosion on everyone and she's going to do AOE moves but she's a legendary the other guy might be good then because if things die you get corrosion applied and we'd want to apply a whole bunch of corrosion you know on that boss I don't know what would be better it'd be better like to smack the orbs or get a whole bunch of corrosion up on the boss and just go ham on that boss only for Rook on Mechatork, we always wanted to do as much damage as possible and knock out those orbs for any other kind of damage. But since Rook relies on all that corrosion stacks, once those orbs are dead, we're going to have to reapply corrosion to them. So that's not going to help with Rook. But we could keep reapplying it to Mechatork and focusing Mechatork. So we might have to play somebody like that differently. I doubt we're going to have a boss that's exactly like Mechatork this season. Probably not. Probably completely different. The dragon was very different. I'm pretty sure maybe they'll go back to something like the dragon to where we have three targets to hit. Where we had his tail, his claw, and uh, his face, I guess. Yeah, this is nowhere near the damage. But even though it's nowhere near the damage that we got, with Dargo, it's still pretty insane damage in the grand scheme of all this. It's still pretty stupid, you know? The might of the rats, you can't stop them. They're too strong. Right? Yeah, I mean we're still getting we're still getting forty seven million. We didn't even get did we get forty seven million with uh yeah we got a, we got to forty seven million with Azul, Espolta, and Taldi. We did get forty seven million with them. So still still good. Yeah, yeah, and it's gonna be even more than this. I mean this doesn't really the ceiling on this and how easy it is to get more damage with better gear, it's and as we do our elemental advantage and we do that farther out and get more damage from that, 
this gets stronger and stronger. Okay, so 50 million. Yeah, you did. Rook did 33 million instead of 40 million. So obviously not as much corrosion applied. And this guy only pulled off, the new one only pulled off 7.7 .7 million as opposed to Dargo's 12 million. So much less. But if you have Rook and you got to play with this guy, you know, you're still, you're still going to do okay, right? Whisk pulled in exactly the same because he has the same gear, the same time frame. He's at 7.9 million. He was at 7.8, 7 million, 859,000 before. He's at 7 million, 941 this time. Was it seven? Yeah. 941, 487. All right, we got some more numbers. All right, fellas, we'll pick it up tomorrow. I'm going to eat some dinner. It is already uh, 7 p.m. here. It's Sunday. My family's off. We had a good today day today at the Cherry Blossom Festival. That was a lot of fun. Rook is the champ. Rook is the champ. I mean, there's nothing that can kind of compete with this guy. He's pretty easy to make him do a lot of damage for sure. And if you're lucky enough to have Dargo, which since Dargo is an epic, a lot of people are going to have him. And you can pick him up with a 99 cent epic selector box, right? <laughs> so pretty nice. If you're not playing Dragonair, come and join us. Look at the link down below. Come and down, download it on Steam. Download it on your mobile device. Come over to Discord. Play with me in Discord. There's a lot of people in Discord. If you have any questions, you can ask any time of day. And we'll do some more testing tomorrow. I know it's a little boring to do testing for some of you guys, but if you actually have a certain team that you want us to test, it would be exciting for you. So just let us know. Like When we start testing all this stuff, let us know what you have access to and that you want us to try out. A lot of it we might have already tried out, so you can always go to that uh, spreadsheet and always check that out. That's at the bottom of my videos, so really easy to find on YouTube. Let's see if anybody else is streaming right now. I don't think anybody is. Who's streaming Dragonair? But I'll probably be back tomorrow morning. And I definitely will be back tomorrow morning if we hit Adventure Rank uh, 28. If there's a lot to do tomorrow with Adventure Rank 28, then I'll be back on tomorrow. If not, if there's nothing to do, then you want to see Fathom Down? I don't think Fathom Down isn't a DP. He's a control. right? Fathom Down is for doing 3x3 three three stuns, which stops them from their, from their ultimate gauge going up. And then he's there for multi-targets to knock back their ultimate gauge. To do decent damage, he'll do good damage if they're clumped up. But he's not there for, you know, he's a Feymander pillar kind of guy. Right? Yeah, and that ultimate can actually do more than that. Can do more than 800% if there's enough people next to it. Like, say you have two people next to each other, it will actually do double that damage on both of them if they stay close enough. Yeah. But it's not going to do that on the Vortex boss because there's only one target. And it's not going to knock back the Vortex ultimate gauge because we can't knock it back. So on Vortex, and we can't stun him, Vortex is not going to do anything. Now going through Fey, going through Pillar, yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. Trying him out in Arena would be fun as well. Definitely, we can try him in Arena. Or we can try him in some other kind of controlled environment just to see what he does. Higher floors of Fey or something like that. But thanks everybody hanging out, appreciate it. I will see you guys tomorrow. And that might be in, uh, you know, like 13 hours or so. But if not, then I'll come and do a late night stream some other day. All right, midnight. Take care, buddy. I'll see you soon.